So where we were at was we tried to build the Android open source project using the Sony Open Devices project uh, repository and devices and we run into this error and it says the kernel for Sony MSM 414 common kernel kernel DTB discovery needed by this out target product discovery kernel is missing and no known rule to make it ninja failed with exit status one so what that means is we need to build this so we go to that folder and we see that there's a build kernel GCC and a build kernel Clang shell script so in this case uh, I'm actually going to use the GCC you can do whatever you'd like but uh, I've used both before and I've had more success with the function of everything after using GCC I'm not saying the Clang doesn't work it did build and it did boot but uh, actually more functions of mine worked when I built it with GCC if that makes any sense so uh, it technically shouldn't matter but uh, it did for me so I'll just let you know what worked for me if we open this shell script we see what it's going to do it's going to look at the kernel source and it's going to make an out directory and it's going to use GCC in this building tool and uh, this cross compiling chain and go ahead and build that uh, for these different devices we're going to see it's going to build for the Lori, the Tone, the Yoshino, Nile, Gangs, Tama and Kumano? Kumano? I think that's how you say it. And in my case, I need it for the Nile uh, Discovery Pioneer Voyager. And in my very simple case, it's just the Discovery is all that I need. And so it has this list right here that says which devices it builds for, and then a platform for which platforms it's going to build Lawyer, Tone, Yoshino, Nile, Genghis, Tama, and Kuno, or Kamono. Kumano. Boy, I gotta work on that. Okay, so uh, I want to show you a trick though before we begin. Having to build all of these kernels will take a very long time. So what would be easier is actually if we go in here into platforms, and in my case I only need Nile. So if you don't know what you need exactly, well, then leave them all. Uh, but if you know what group yours is in, which hopefully you do because you know what you're trying to build, then you'll just know what which one you want. You can delete from this platform all these other ones that you don't need to build. So in my case, I just want to build Nile. And then if you want, you can even delete these from the list for the ones that you aren't going to build from yours. So I just want to build Nile Discovery. So I delete this and then I have to save my file and now the only thing I'm going to build is Nile Discovery okay but if I didn't do what I just showed you I would have to build the Suzu, the Kugo, the Blanc, the Dora, the Kigara, the Kiyaki, the Lilac, the Maple, the Poplar everything everything in this list would have to get built so that's why I recommend you do this because you're probably just building for one particular phone or maybe two particular phones or maybe one group of phones and you don't need everything else so this works out it is a very handy way to save yourself some time so what we have to do is we have to get to this common kernel folder so we're going to CD to change directory to kernel uh, and we look under kernel and we see we have Sony, right? And then we want into the MSM 414, and then the kernel, uh, excuse me, then the common kernel folder. So notice my build environment is still set up, and you really need that to be the case for what you're about to do. You have your build environment all set up, everything is going to be set properly the way that it should be. So if you you know exited and come back to this then you should go to the root directory of your device tree in our case Android SODP 10 and run your build environment setup choose which device you're building for all that kind of stuff just like normal but don't make just come to this folder now and if we look in this folder we'll see we have 
you know our shell scripts. So what we want to do is run the build kernels gcc dot shell. So here it is, and this is why I suggested that you set up your build environment first. Notice that it makes sure that it's set for whatever variant you want um, to use. And it starts going through here and setting up its global variables that it's going to need. And if you're wondering, since these were not in the instructions, typically for their build environments, they've already built all of these for you. And so you would just use one of the pre-built ones. Um, personally, I don't recommend using the pre-built ones because as you go through and make changes or as Android source code gets updated, you're not 100% sure that you always have the latest pre-built kernel. So uh, one positive thing, though, is once this kernel is in here, that means they consider it to be stable. So uh, this is really great for the 4.14. Hopefully we will we'll, uh, have a great working kernel when we're all done. So it's going through, once again, it's getting all those global variables, and then it's going to, uh, you know, look at the includes and decide what it's going to build, make its build rules, and then it's going to start building the kernel itself. So it should just take a few more minutes for that to get started. Um, in here, if you look, uh, there's really just a lot of this build script is deciding what it's going to build, you know, if it's going to build this or that or this or that. And then once it's decided what it's going to build, then it is going to um, output some data to the terminal so you can see what's happening and uh, it starts building that new kernel image for each particular, uh, you know, device kernel that was selected. So I don't think we'll need this anymore. I'll close this out. And we will drop this down just a little bit so we can see in here. And of course our new discovery kernel should show up in about this area when it is complete. which will hopefully start in just a moment. Uh, some of the uh, errors I've seen, or I shouldn't say errors, some of the problems I've seen when using the pre-built kernel as opposed to building your own, uh, I've seen, for instance, on the discovery uh, issues with the camera where it'll actually turn the um, preview screen green even though it takes a normal picture, the preview screen does not look correct. <clears throat> I've had issues with that. Uh, of course, some issues with uh, um, MTP uh, and file transfer. Of course, that's uh, a change that we actually have to make in the source code of the uh, of the kernel itself to make that work properly. So there's a few edits and things that normally would need to be done uh, to make this all work perfectly. But uh, as it is, this will work well enough to uh, to do the build and something we can actually see. So of course it does set the variable allow missing dependencies uh, because it's only building the kernel so it's not worried about building everything. So that's uh, that's an important thing to note. A little different than we might be used to seeing. Uh, you don't normally want to build with uh, allowing missing dependencies. But it is specific to the uh, to this kernel building process. 
All right, this is taking a little while. I'm going to pause the video here and we'll pick it back up as soon as we see it started. All right, and now it's uh, writing those build rules so it can go through and start building the kernel. So hopefully we'll see that pop up here in just a moment. All right, so here we see it popped up. Uh, it's finished making all of its build rules. It says your environment, where you are, what kernel you're building, and uh, where it's going. And then platform, Nile device discovery. And this build may take up to 10 minutes. Please be patient and building new kernel image. And so it starts building that and it's putting a log in a log area here in out kernel dash temp build underscore log discovery. So let's take a look at that. Out. Kernel temp. And we see build log discovery, which if we click on it now, it's 70.1. Let's uh, open with the text editor. We'll take a look at it. So it's just going through and uh, warning me that GCC has been depreciated in favor of Clang. So just so you know, you probably should use Clang for the newer builds, but I uh, kind of like my old GCC. Anyhow, so in this log is just a lot of warnings about that. It starts going through and setting up all those uh, kernel uh, functions that you normally would see while you're building Android. All of these would scroll by as it goes through to include and generate and everything uh, to make the different uh, uh, kernel objects, put them together, and uh, finally put a kernel uh, output to you. So that's what's happening under the hood, but all we see is just this. Fortunately for you guys, I won't make you sit here and wait the 10 minutes for it to complete. I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video. When it's done, we'll see the output and see what we've got. All right, so we can see that it has completed. It copies that new kernel image here. We see this kernel DTB discovery right there. Uh, we see clean up environment and then it is done. So this is really great. Now it is all set and ready for us to continue our build. So we can just type C root, right? Since we've got our Android environment all set up, C root should take us to the top of the directory, Android SODP underscore 10. We still are set to make the same thing, but I like to make sure that we're building what we want to build by build environment setup shell. And we run our lunch. Like I said, you probably don't have to do this, but I like to make sure. And I think our number was 36, but I'll have to look again. Yes, 36. So 36, we hit enter. And then we type make. So now it's going to go through and start uh, looking up those global variables. It's going to set up uh, all of, or read through all the includes, make sure that it can find everything, and uh, set in order the uh, the order of the build, and make the build rules, write the build rules, and then start building. So uh, we've seen that process get started already before. Uh, in the previous video and so that's the same thing that's going to happen here and uh, hopefully we uh, get some really good errors so we can uh, look at something to fix but unfortunately uh, the Sony Open Device Project does a really really great job of putting this together so we're probably not going to see any errors during this build and it's going to be fairly straightforward uh, to the end but we will come back and look at the finished product and look at the rest of the instructions for flashing to our device. Uh, there is a slightly different step in there than normal AOSP because there is a vendor uh, 
not excuse me, not a vendor partition, but an OEM partition where you need to download a special file and put that on your phone as well. So uh, we'll check all that out when uh, when the build is complete. And uh, till then, I'll see you guys next time.